All right, sauce hinges. These are kind of cool. I like them, I use them a lot. They're pretty versatile. I like the fact that they're hidden when the door or lid is closed. They have a lot of different sizes. This is a 204. This is a 101, I believe. This is inch and three quarter, maybe? Inch and 11 sixteenths, yeah. Inch and 11 sixteenths. This one's two and three eighths by half inch wide, three eighths wide. A lot of different applications. This works, these work good for uh, small boxes, the 101. The 204 works good for, well, bigger boxes. <laughs> I wanted to use a 204, it seemed appropriate for the lid in this case, but this requires about three quarters of an inch. I only have three quarters of an inch lid. So I'm gonna use a couple of these. It'll be plenty, plenty good. This is kind of a hidden compartment. It'll not be used much anyway, but even if it was used daily, this these are really strong hinges. And you have to put them in precise. I'm gonna show you how I do it. You can make a jig similar to mine or even simpler. You don't have to buy the jig from them, although you could, but it's a simple process and I'll show you how I do that, all right? So let's get started. I'm gonna mark these out. I've got this centered. There's a little bit of clearance here. So I got this mark, I'm just gonna put a mark across there. So I'm going off of centers when I do these, center of the hinge, whichever one I use. Now, what's cool about the sauce hinge is you can use it for inset doors or overlay. So this is basically an overlay because it's overlaid, it's not inside. You know, if this was inside the edge, like here and here, a lot of different applications, but um, so. Yeah, very cool hinge. So here we have a few different configurations of a router bit that could cut these cavities. Starting at the left, that's a single flute, then a double flute, then an upcut spiral, and on the right is a downcut spiral. And now a basic and generalized description of the differences. So a single flute is designed to move a lot of material, a lot of chips. It's going to leave a little bit of a rougher cut. And I say generalized because if you took it easy and nice and controlled, that bit would do fine. The second one is a double flute. It's going to cut a little bit cleaner. And the third one is an upcut spiral. And as the name implies, it's moving the chips upward. And if you plunge it all the way through with that bit, it would leave a nice clean cut on the bottom, but it can leave a little bit of a burr or some chipping on the top surface. And conversely and last, the bit on the right is a downcut spiral and it's going to not be very effective to remove material, but its compromise is that it'll leave a nice clean cut surface at the top with no chipping, right? So yeah, any one of these bits would work for cutting these mortises and you would notice the subtle differences as I described. So anytime you're cutting a stepped mortise or making multiple passes to get the depth, a plunge router is the ideal tool. And I absolutely love collars on routers. The versatility that they provide is incredible. All right, so I have a scrap. This depicts the thickness of the box, the back of the box. And I want to figure out where this hinge goes. I'm using this 101 hinge. And I know from the schematics that I've, I've checked on the sauce hinge, to get the lid flush with the box in the back, it needs a 3 30 seconds offset. This is my jig and I'll show more on this later, but you can see here I've marked 3 30 seconds setback or offset. So that, what that means is from the edge of this hinge when it's installed to the edge, to the outside edge of this component, that needs to be 3 30 seconds. So an easy way to figure that out is I go off centers off the hinge. So this 101 is a 3 8 thick. This probably drives the Europeans crazy, but it's a 3 8 thick. It needs a 3 8 wide mortise. It's 3 8, right? So half of that is 3 16. Okay, so 3 16 plus my 3 30 seconds. So I can go 3 16 and then 1, 2, 3 30 seconds. So now I'm a quarter plus or 9 30 seconds. That's where I want the center of the hinge off this back edge. So a lot of ways you could do this. You could mark this like that. Let's see if that shows up right in there. 
You could use a marking gauge. I like using a scribe. I use this all the time. So I can just take this. I can set this at quarter plus or 930 seconds. And then this is my reference side. I've marked fence. Lay that down. Let's see how that looks. Bam, right there, 930 seconds. So I'm just gonna mark that. I don't know where I'm gonna put the hinge in this piece. So I'm just gonna mark this all the way across. This is just scrap anyway. So that's my reference line. That'll be the center of this hinge. Just like that. That'll give me 330 seconds back set from this edge to the outside face. Makes sense, yeah? Back set, offset, set back. It's all the same to me. All right, let's check out this jig for a little bit. Now, this is probably a little more complicated than you need. There's, I'm gonna show you an easier way to make this. Once I made this, I realized it didn't have to be this complicated, but I made it like this so I could use two different hinges, which I primarily use the most of, the 101 and the 204. And these hinges, let me grab the other one. They require a stepped mortise. They need a mortise this deep and this wide, or this long, by this wide width, right? And then they need another mortise, a deeper one that goes this deep and that long by that same width. So it's two, it's two mortises. You can see this part of the jig here separates. And so with this part of the jig, I can route this first depth, this first step, and make that that long. And then I can put this piece in place Incidentally, the collar rides on that to make that cut. And then the outside of the router bottoms out against here and here, making a shorter mortise, although I'm going deeper to make this part of the mortise, right? And then I wanted to have one jig for both the 101 and the 204 sauce hinge, so I can literally change this dimension by moving this guy. This rotates to over here. I've got that Mark 204, makes a longer mortise. And then with a different, you can see it's bigger. This guy goes here and to create that other part of the mortise for the 204. Like I said, it doesn't have to be this complicated, which really is not that complicated. But for somebody just starting out, there are easier ways to make a sauce hinge, and I'll show that to you. So let me put this back before I forget. That goes there. I've got that Mark Green 101. I've got all my information on here. 101 has a 3 30 seconds setback. It requires a 3 8 router bit and a 1 inch collar. The 204, it's a half inch wide, so it needs a half inch bit. Same collar, 1, one inch and the setback is different eighth inch so just mark your information on your jigs and just makes it easy later when you go to route okay so now that i've shown that jig a little bit let's go ahead and set this up so i have this referenced fence or face and that'll go here against the fence and you can see this jig has this adjustable fence right i've got the fence clamped in my vise and I have center marks, it's probably hard to see on camera, but I have center marks in here. And so this is my center mark. I need to line that up right there, right there. So that reference line, which is my center of my hinge and the center marks on my jig are lined up. Bam, that is ready to go. Okay, so I've got the jig and my sample piece clamped in the vise. We've got this lateral um, setup, set up, right? We've got that figured out. Now we need to figure out the depth. So that's pretty easy. Now, I love plunge routers because they're so versatile and your plunge router is probably gonna be different. You really need a plunge router to do this. You don't have to have one. It just makes it easier because you can do those stepped mortises uh, utilizing this turret. Now, I know that these two stationary turrets that don't have adjustments, like these other three, um, that they're a quarter inch difference. So, works great for the sauce hinges because on this particular one, the difference between 
the bottom of this mortise and the bottom of this mortise is about a quarter inch. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put the bit in place to just make contact with the work. Router's unplugged. Makes contact with the, with the work right there. And lock that in place. So I love using tape because I know that four pieces is a 64th. And so I utilize that all the time. So I'm gonna take this, tear it in half, and then half again, and half again. So I've got eight pieces of tape. So that's about a 32nd. That's probably a little more than I need, but it'll, it'll work good for the sample. So I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna put this hinge in place. We're gonna tighten that. I'm gonna pull that out. This will work good for the sample just to start. So that's the first cut. And then that'll make this long portion of the mortise. It'll bottom out there. And then of course I can just simply turn that turret to go deeper and utilize a jig to make a smaller mortise. This will make much, much more sense when we get started. So let's, uh, let's make a cut. You'll notice as I make the plunge, I start moving the router immediately rather than using the bit to plunge directly down. It's easier on the bit and they'll last longer. If the bit is spinning in one spot, they can burn and get dull. Cool. Okay, the first portion of that mortise is cut. I add this little frame spacer, move the turret, and now we'll route the deeper portion now I suppose you could use a Forstner bit or maybe a spur bit to cut the round ends of the mortise and then use a chisel to clean things up I've never done it that way I like the clean look of a routed mortise 330 seconds offset mm, it's a little bit small by 64th about. And the reason for that is more than likely, a lot of times these collars on, on these routers are not exactly centered. And there's ways to center those, centering cone and all that. This one must be off a little bit, but for this application, it probably won't even matter, or I can adjust the jig slightly. That's why we do a test piece. A little bit of a burn there. That 3 8 down cut spiral bit is a little bit dull, getting dull. I mean, upcut spiral. This thing is going to fit beautifully. Yeah, not too tight where you have to pry it out and end up bending it and not too loose. You want it pretty tight because part of the strength of this hinge relies in a quality fit and, and the screws, of course. Now the depth, I don't know if you can see that, but it's, it's a little bit Maybe too deep. Let me see when I bring that. No, you can still see a space in between there. It's about right because I don't have to set the one in the lid quite as deep. I can I can set the leaves flush. You could probably just split the difference where each one is the same depth. But anyway, good fit. I'm going to adjust this back set just a little bit, but overall, fantastic. Now, one thing that we didn't talk about, I mentioned putting the center, going centers uh, this way, but I never talked about it when we were setting up the jig. We just got the center of the hinge in this direction in relation to that back set. So centered this way as well. And so this jig also has center marks this way on the inside of this um, pattern, right? This template. And I like double checking that with a block of wood this is half of the mortise or a half of the template mortise. And I can make sure that my center line on my sample piece is correct, which it is. Now, incidentally, it doesn't matter if you start with the deep mortise or the shallow mortise. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure your turret is set correctly. So I'm going to be plunging the deeper mortise. Let's do this one more time. So on this sample, Deeper mortise first, right? Make that cut, remove the frame, set the turret, and do the longer, shallower mortise.
Okay. Wanted to do another one just to check this. Now we're 30, 330 seconds. And this depth is good. So when I close that, I'm about halfway in that gap. Everything looks good. We can make our, our real cuts on the box. Now you may have noticed that fit is a little bit loose. What you can do is simply add a few layers of tape on the inside of the jig, which is what I did. All right, let's go ahead and clamp this dude in place. I've taken this center mark, I've transferred it across that way, so when I put this jig on top, I can see that line, of course. And I'm just gonna get it close, what I think is close, temporary clamp, temporarily clamp that. And then using that little block, yeah, it needs slightly adjusted. Let me grab, grab a hamburger, I mean a hammer, and crack. Right there, right there. Your centers are really important. Incidentally, speaking of which, when you use your router, make sure your trigger is the same orientation every time. So I'm putting my trigger away from my fence in this case. The sample didn't really matter that much, but it does matter when you're doing your routing on your box and your lid, because if your collar is slightly off center to your router bit, you can double the error by switching it around. Does that make sense? So just watch that orientation. So we're, we look good this direction. I'm going to clamp this in place. I've got an upcoming ebook. Should actually be called a V book because it's an ebook with video. It's got lots of tips and tricks. I show these clamping pads um, and a lot of different things. So don't really need one here, but do need one on the front of that cabinet just to not mar that. Mar. Okay. So anyway, yeah, that ebook, I'm uh, really excited about trying to get that launched soon. Maybe by the time this airs, it will be launched. Good clamp there. I'm gonna go ahead and use a different clamp back here. These tend to relax as the router vibration will not hold that solid, so. But that will. All right, here we go. So I've decided to split this video up into two parts. I've noticed that people tend to drop off on longer videos and 10 to eh, about 20 minute videos seem to be the best duration. So anyway, come back for part two. Thanks a ton for watching.